Hi everybody, it's Martin from the Washboard Resonators and you are officially in the coolest part of the internet because this is a lesson about how to learn banjo. So um, this is designed for somebody who either has just bought a banjo, you've got it home, you want to learn a little bit of a claw hammer technique and a song, or perhaps you think you'd like to play banjo and you don't know really what, what, what to start, what the different styles are. So um, this video will explain everything and teach you a song, Wreck of the Old 97, and claw hammer style, very simply. Hopefully, it will be of use. So the first thing to assume is that you're here to play a five string banjo. Um, there are different kinds of banjos, four string banjos, you might use those in traditional jazz or in uh, traditional Irish play and they have a shorter neck, but this is for a five string banjo. So by that we mean um, four strings, one, two, three, four, that are long to the, all the way to the nut, and then this higher fifth string. There are three main ways of playing banjo, so we're, we're assuming that you're here because you want to learn claw hammer style. Um, claw hammer, or some people call it frailing or knockdown, you might see that on uh, titles, is a style of playing that's related to the, the, the first style of playing when uh, banjos as an instrument came out of Africa. And the way you play it is you play with your fingers going that way, hitting with a nail and pinging. So it's all outward strokes, the opposite of if you're plucking a guitar. Um, the other styles uh, that might be relevant, one is called scrug style. Now I don't have the full finger picks here, but this is where you use finger picks, metal finger picks. And it sounds really fast. And that's related to kind of 30s, 40s, um, bluegrass banjo style. It's named after Earl Scruggs. The other style of banjo playing is known as, um, some people call it classical banjo playing. That's where you might play with your fingers, almost as if you were playing like classical guitar, and you play very very complex songs, arrangements of old tunes. Um, that's a whole other kettle of fish. We're talking about frailing, claw hammer, knockdown, folk banjo. So if you're choosing a banjo, um, let's make it kind of simple. If you're playing Scruggs bluegrass style, you probably want a closed back banjo. Um, they just make the sound a little bit more kind of um, punchy. It gives the notes more of a chance to sustain. Um, if you're playing more kind of folk styles, you'll probably have um, an open back banjo. They just sound a little bit more plunky. Some people even put um, kind of like plastic or nylon strings that rep um, replicate gut, like when, when strings used to be made out of cat gut. Um, now, that, they're made out of synthetic nylon, but some people put those on their open back for this style and it sounds very warm and very plinky. I get asked for advice about buying banjos sometimes, and um, it's kind of difficult because they're very kind of um, strange instruments. Basically, I'm filming this in 2020, um, the year that is, can't see, but um, if you spend something like two to three hundred pounds, or um, it's about the same now, 250 to 350 dollars uh, on something brand new, then you should get something that's playable and something that's okay. Um, I'm playing um, a D-ring made Vega banjo, which um, I think new would cost around 1200 pounds. Um, so about maybe 14, 1500 dollars. This is a really nice instrument. Um, I have others uh, that didn't cost that and they're perfectly decent. If you're in the UK and you're looking at buying a banjo, um, the best place is a place called Eagle Music. They are Europe's number one D-ring um, uh, distributor and basically Europe's number one banjo expert. And they're very near to me. They're about uh, half an hour in that direction um, in my hometown of Huddersfield. And they're very helpful, very friendly. And if you do go there and buy a banjo, tell them I sent you because... Uh, I'll keep getting my discount on strings and harmonicas. So if you are new to these things, you'll be wondering about getting in tune. So basically, uh, the banjo is tuned thusly. This is a G note, the, the, the high string is a G note, then it's a D, then it's a G, then it's a B, and then it's a D. Now, if you're very new to this, that might not make much sense. What you can do is you can buy one of these clip-on tuners, 
you see? And you click with your headstock, and basically it tells you what the note is, and it goes green as you tune to get into, into tune. Okay then, so on with the lesson. Um, this is uh, a tune, Wreck of the Old 97. Uh, first of all, let me just play you a verse and an instrumental passage now. Well, they gave him his orders in London, Virginia St. Steve, so we behind time. This is not the day, it's old 97, got to put it into central on time. There we go, that was uh, Record on Night 7. Now, um, that was quite fast and uh, quite exciting. Um, the techniques I'm going to show you are quite simple, but they will take time to get the muscle memory um, so that eventually you can play them at speed. But, you know, my experience of playing a lot of gigs is that when you play those kind of fast banjo songs, people really like them and uh, they get people dancing. And, you know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and entertaining and giving people a good time. So, uh, without further ado, let's look at the song. OK, then. So the first thing we're going to learn is the claw hammer technique. Um, now. Basically, it's a kind of syncopated idea, so we just forget this hand for now. Let's look at this hand. The first thing is, it, it helps to um, have a slightly longer fingernail here, or here. Some people use this finger. Some people use this finger. It kind of helps if you use one finger. So I've seen some people learning that have kind of helped, and they try and use two fingers because they're used to playing guitar, and it just kind of kills the notes. Uh, if you don't have the fingernail, you can get by, it just sounds a bit softer, or you may think about using, um, this is a finger pick, but instead of playing it that way around, you might put it that way around, and uh, plastic ones seem to work best, I've got metal there. Um, that's your choice. So, this is 98% of what Clawhammer Banjo playing is all about. What you do is you take that finger, I'm using this finger, and you aim for the, let's call it the middle string, which is the G string. There's so many jokes. We won't do it. Um, you can't do it anymore. Anyway, can you can't say those kind of jokes anymore, can you? You can't, they don't let you, do they? Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to think about playing that string, and then the wound string, the fatter string. And that's just a nice place to start, is practicing that. And if you do play guitar, believe me, that's gonna be, you're going to find that difficult. Uh, when I started learning, learning this, I, I used to keep a banjo in the boot of my car, and I had a day job at the time, and I would sit in my car at lunchtime with a banjo, <laughs> have a packed lunch. And it was weeks before all this kind of settled in, just sat there with people, school kids walking past calling me names. If you're playing banjo, get used to it. Um, so, first thing is... Trying to get that sound. And the way to kind of get it... The way to kind of get it is to sort of bounce into the string and bounce off. Okay, so you, you want to try and get that. The next thing to try and get then is to then strum a chord in between those notes. What you should hear there is you are playing a kind of almost like a piano pattern. You've got a, a bass line, dum 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 dum. And you've got almost like a, like a right hand chord thing happening. Okay, that's the next stage. We're going to add the thin string. This syncopates, so basically that just means that the the accent that we play in the thin string falls over the natural pattern of what we're playing with our uh, fingers. So that will sound like this. And what that is, it's this. It's, you're going to go one, two, and three, four, and. So you always play the thin string on the and.
some people call it the uh, bum titty. You shouldn't. You can't say that anymore. But it's um, bum titty, bum titty, bum titty, bum titty, bum diddy. Um, so that is probably going to take you some time to, to kind of get that especially if you're new to this instrument or you've played other instruments because it goes against everything you're probably used to but what you should find is that if you just like anything that you're learning you start really slowly as slow as it takes to get it perfect doesn't matter how slow it is but you you learn it by getting it bang on right however slow that is don't try and do it fast and get it wrong because you, you'll be learning it wrong um hmm. Then you can speed it up. It sounds great. So it's a very simple move. Once you get that, it becomes automatic. You'll love it. Okay, so the next stage for that song is what to do with this hand and fretting. Now, the banjo is tuned to an open chord of G. So you could play a guitar with a G chord. Uh-huh. And that shape is just all the strings open. Um, now, so we can really simplify this song. We can do this song by not putting our hands down at all, this hand. And then if we just make a bar, we get a chord. The chord of C. Um, the other song, uh, the other chord that we need in this song is, is a D, or really a D7, but for the sake of argument we can go from fret 5, and we can just play those four long strings, we leave the, the thin one half string open. That is our D major chord. Um, so, that, so what you can do is play that song just by barring the four strings, letting go, Barring those four strings with just a straight line, letting go. And it's all there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a graphic up that shows you the bar lengths, just so you can pause it and see what you need to see. Um, now. Boing. Okay, so um, let's just play through that then. One, two, one round through okay so um, you should be able to play that again working up um, counting yourself along with the chord changes write them down or just memorize them um, you should be able to get that so it sounds like the song uh, you know it's a very simplified version but it will get you going so you can do the song okay good the next stage is Slightly harder, we're going to learn the actual chord shapes that allow us to do a little bit more. Okie dokie, so we are going to do uh, a C shape and we're going to do a D7 shape, which sounds a little bit more interesting than the, the D major, a D7. Don't worry too much now about the music theory side, if you get into this, and who wouldn't? You'll figure all this out, you'll have music theory lessons. Okay, so, um, as we know, open is the chord that we want. So the next stage is to play a C chord. Now I'm just going to talk you through this now. So what we're going to do for the C chord is we're going to play the first st string, second fret. We're going to play the second string at the first fret. We're going to play the third string, open. We're going to play the fourth string, the second fret, 
and obviously the the half string is um, is just open. So that's a C chord. Lovely. Next up is the D chord. We're going to do um, first string open. Second string is the first fret. Third string is the second fret. And the fourth string is that open D. And again, we play the half string open. So next up, we're going to play with that with those chord shapes. So there we go, so we played through the song. Next stage is to look at some of those embellishments that I did. Um, these are quite simple ideas that you can expand upon and use to your own kind of, uh, you know, uh, move around and use. But basically, let's look at uh, some little ideas on the, the, the G chord. So I'm not playing anything. One of my favorite little licks to use when, when I'm just uh, rolling along there is to just use like a hammer on, on the fourth string, the fat string, to fret two. So it might sound like this. Or you can just do them every time. And that can sound quite clever, even though it is <laughs> even though it isn't. But yeah, it uh, sure yeah, the uh, the farmers like it. Um, another lick that is just a really simple little idea that's a nice embellishment is to uh, on the, the G chord is to take your third string. And you can sort of do like a slide down to fret four, fret two, and open. So all I'm doing is I'm just playing that every time my finger hits it as part of the bum titty. Little variations. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Next up on the C chord. You can just do the same hammer on that you did earlier. You can also do it with this finger on the second fret of the first string. Sounds kind of nice. Okay, cool. Next thing you can do uh, as a little embellishment on the D7 chord. You can do hammer-ons um, just by taking your finger off the second fret on the third string. You can also do a similar move as when we went down to fret four. You can just go... You can even play the whole chord. And another thing you can do is to mix up that bum titty kind of rhythm. So instead of just playing a bass figure that sounds like that, you can maybe mix it around. Uh, you could just, just play, say, just that, that third string. Uh, that sounds kind of droney and nice. It's kind of a little variant. Uh, you could even, on the, the, the C chord, you can, instead of playing, I'm just doing this so you can see, but playing the third string and the fourth string, you can mix that, turn it, turn it around and then play the fourth and then the third. That's a nice variation. So if you just add all them together, you can get some nice ideas. That's a beginner's uh, guide to kind of claw hammer folk banjo playing. Some very simple ideas that will get you playing and from those chord shapes you should be able to play i mean literally tens of thousands of folk songs and popular songs and blues songs and rock and roll songs and country songs with those three chords so hopefully that helps um to take it further there's loads of stuff on youtube loads of great teachers there are um books like this this is what i kind of learned in my car uh, many 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 years ago and it's kind of got loads of tunes 
The next stage after this is you'll want to be able to play um, tunes as you're actually playing. Um, that, that all comes with time. And then, um, yeah, I mean, you can go very far with this. Um, so, thank you very much everybody for making it this far. Uh, my name is Martin and I play with the Washboard Resonators and we are a professional full-time um, duo playing 20s, 30s, 40s kind of music and our own songs and uh, we do this professionally. So it's um, a pleasure to share this information. I hope it helps. Um, probably about once every six months we get uh, little emails through from someone saying, oh, I'm thinking about buying a banjo, what do you need to know? Um, Hopefully this video helps with some of those decisions and also um, kind of gets you started to playing and you can take it as far as you want. Okay, so do check us out uh, on our website, through the Spotify, through the Facebook, through the Instagram and like and share and comment because it, it, it all actually helps more people see our stuff. And um, do take care and see you all again. Bye-bye.